Hey, hey, AI creatives, we're back with another video today. And in today's video, we're going to go over how to get this text on your actual digital designs when you're actually creating them. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to head over to ChatGPT. And when you head over to ChatGPT, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and make sure that you go to Explore GPTs and get that extension Dow E on your actual chat gpt workspace so this is what dial e would look like and once you're in the space you're going to click in dial e and it's going to bring you to a workspace similar to this so i actually already started generating some new images so i can show you straight from the start so here in this image this is the prompt that i actually generated so feel free to take the prompt because you know i'm here to give y'all all the information step by step and here's the image, the new image that I actually ended up using. ChatGPT does this funny stuff. Really, I should say Dal E because it works in connection with ChatGPT, but we're in the Dal E workspace, which is a text to prompt digital art or art creation tool, I should say. I just primarily use it to create watercolor digital illustrations. But all the prompt is, is simply what you see here. It's simply you taking the actual words that you want to bring to life in your actual digital illustration. So in this case, this is the actual prompt that I use. We could go ahead and regenerate, but I'll show you how to get rid of this background. It's super easy to do, but we'll go ahead and regenerate the prompt. I'm gonna just type in regenerate. So once you actually have the prompt in, which you can utilize, I'm going to click regenerate. Hopefully it doesn't give me anything funny, but it did. See, look, they, this is, and what happens when you do this, hit bad response and say, do not like the style. You could say multiple things, but we will go ahead and regenerate again. Sometimes it just gets really funny, but again, AI isn't perfect. Nobody is, so it's okay. So we'll go ahead and regenerate, but I'm going to show you how to actually bring in the text. And I don't want multiple images either. So I'm going to see, this is the part where I say tips and tricks. So in this workspace, what I'm going to say is there should only be, and I'm going to put quotation marks, one woman in the image, right? Because we don't need three people in there. And I put it in quotation marks so that so that ChatGPT can actually pick up that I want it to be one person in the actual image, right? So now you have this here and you see it is much better. So we could go ahead and utilize this as well. So we could download this. This is a nice image as well. So we could go ahead and keep that as well. So now we're gonna head back over to our workspace. So now once we're in the workspace and the actual size that I'm using is 1024 by 1792. So when you're on the Canva homepage, all you have to do is click custom size and you could type in the actual size that I'm using into here. But the really cool thing is, is if you go to upload and you upload the actual picture that you want, it will actually take the size of the image and it'll upload the size for you in the custom size. So because we already are inside of here, we'll just keep it simple. And because today we're going to use, we're going to show you how to add text like I did for this image. We're going to just head back up to the top. So I have a lot of different images in here. The one image that you did see was this image here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add another page. When you get in, it'll be blank pages. But I'm going to go to upload just to show you how I was able to actually remove this background inside of here. And then what I like to do is I like to make it bigger. And then you can zoom in. And then I'm just going to hit BG remover. Now I have the paid version. Anything with a crown inside of Canva is paid version only. So I love the paid version because I can do everything in, in one workspace. But if you don't, you could go to removebg.com. I believe that is the free removal tool that you can actually use if you don't have the actual paid version inside of Canva. So again, once we have this, all we have to do, what I like to do is I like to close in the image as much as possible. Could also exit that on the side. So we could look here. And this is what I like to do. 
I'm also going to upload the other image inside because I'm going to be able to, let's see if we could get two, let's see if we could do two text-based designs today. So we'll work on this one first. So we could just think about what we want to say and we could keep the same wording as well. So now once I have this inside, what I like to do is I like to zoom in. Now, as you can see, this is a watercolor. You always want to check for the eyes, the hands, like everything's looking good. This is a little messed up, but it'll still work out. So now I want to head over to text. Now, when you head over to text, the great thing about Canva is that it gives you nice font combinations that you could utilize as well so like this this is a nice font here like if you wanted to utilize it you could kind of test it out but what i love to do is you could also search so i search for fancy because you know i want some fancy type of font style to use and then i like to utilize this and you could change it as it goes so for today's video we will use dream dream avenue and we'll go ahead and this might be too light um, because we can't make it bold. So yeah, so we'll use another font because this is just a little too light. So the Seasons is one of my favorite fonts. So if you want to utilize a really good font like that you can use for anything, the Seasons is definitely a favorite font. So comment below what your favorite fonts are. So I don't really know what saying I want to say. Uh, let's just say, um, let's just do, um, since it's HBCU season, uh, let's just do HBCU raised, right? Because HBCU basically raised me. So we're going to do that. I might make it bold just because you can see it a little bit better. And I like to actually make it look like exactly what it would look like on a shirt. So we'll zoom out some, right? Because if this was the actual V-neck, it'll look something like this. And I might actually change this font because of, hold on, let's just see. Uh, let's just see. So they have Della Vespera. So let's just see if we type in. Yeah, that one is a lot better. I like it because you can see it a lot darker and it's already dark. So what I like to do is just make it look exactly. And the cool thing is you could add your logo on these shirts, a bunch of different things, but you want to place it to where it makes sense if you were really wearing a shirt. So I like to keep it aligned with the shoulders because typically that is where your text is aligned when you when you wear a graphic uh, shirt, graphic t-shirt. And it's also a little in the middle, just cause you wanna keep it aligned. And you can see here below that it's actually here. Now, one of the things that I love to do is I like to turn the transparency down. And the reason why I do that is cause I wanna make it seem like it's faded into the shirt but you can still see it. So 83 is perfect for me. And then because I'm gonna actually upscale it, it's going to even get even darker. So it's totally fine to actually turn down the transparency. So now you have your text on your actual image, which is beautiful. So you can actually change it to anything that you want. Um, here at the bottom, I'm gonna also show you something. So I use, uh, BIGJPG.com, which is below, and I use that upscaler. Now, in all my videos, people always ask me why I use that as an upscaler because I like the way it upscales the images, and this is what I'm going to show you. So, when you actually are on BIGJPG.com, it's going to give you the option if you want to upscale an artwork or photo. And when you upscale in photo, this is what you'll get it'll keep the same watercolor look which is beautiful i love watercolor and what it'll allow you to do is it'll just upscale the image a lot more and just kind of refine it but when you use the artwork feature which i really love i do a lot of my designs 
and artwork finished as the end which is why i use bigjpg.com and this is the finished look so this is more of a watercolor artwork kind of smooth outlook which is what i love the best so i like this look but i also like this look so it just really all depends and as you can see here when i made the image transparent when you actually upscale it it still brings it to pop but it actually looks like it's on the shirt so i would do the same thing for this image here i would actually go ahead and take this image upscale it into bigjpg.com upscale this image and you can actually change it so you could change this you could put images on here uh you could put um let's just say past me uh since we have thanksgiving coming up you could put a pie let's just say a pie right we if we wanted to put like some type of pie on here we could right this is the watercolor look so you can really get creative here right you could get super creative with what you actually do inside of here and you can move this over so i'm gonna align this so here is the alignment so i can actually bring in the pie to where i want it to be which i want it to be right next to the text so everything is aligned and again you want to zoom in at the bottom and i close this out so that way i can actually see and then i'm just going to oops and just hit the undo button if you ever if you're if you're ever messing up in the design and what i want to do is i want to just make sure that this design actually is aligned to where i want it to be but i also want to group this together because i need to move this i'm going to move this out the way just a little bit and what i want to do is i want to move this in to where i want it to be and then I'm going to move this in right here because I want it to be, like I said, I like it to keep it on the shoulder. So, and I need to make this just a little bit smaller again. And then we could also change the font, right? So we don't have to keep the same font. So we could change it but i kind of like the way this looks so what i might do is i'm zooming in just some and then i might just bring down the pie just a little bit more and then now you have the text here and then i think the transparency is already down see you see the difference so if it's up you'll see it so i like to bring the transparency down because again, when we upscale it, it's going to make it darker anyway. And then I think I want to move this image over some. But, and then I'm going to move the pie over. So now it's just about adjusting where you want it to go. Alright, so I like it like this. And let me go ahead and lock the image so i'm gonna lock this image so i'm gonna click on the three dots and i'm gonna click lock lock position so that way i could just work inside of here without the actual image moving and i'm gonna hit group so now i can actually group this and move this around the way i want it to you know and i can move this up and down once you get it the way so you always want to lock the image so that way it's not moving when you're in the space and i like this so you can get really creative on what you're doing you can add necklaces so many different things to add in here but listen this is how the image will look so pass me the pie you know thanksgiving season you can actually go ahead and get super creative they have like necklaces in here um you could do like watercolor necklaces so there's there's a lot of different things that you can do to your design to make it your own actual so if you wanted to add let's just say we want to add this in we could and you just want to 
I give it, you want to make sure that it's around the neck. Because it wants you want it to look like it's around the neck. So you want to zoom in. You're going to have to definitely do some zooming in here. To make sure that it gives the appearance of it being around the neck, right? Otherwise, it won't look like it's around the neck. So this looks good because when you actually have your necklace on and your hair is behind, this is exactly how the necklace is going to look. So we just want to zoom out some. Because you want it to be as if it's on the neck, right? Because you don't want it to look like it's not on the neck. And then also to make an easier design, to make it easier, let's say you don't find the perfect one. So like for here, this looks good to me because it actually look like looks like it's on the neck. But if I wanted to do like a choker or something of that nature, I could do that as well. So I could do, um, well, let's just see how this one looks. You can have a chain. Uh-oh. We don't want to get too carried away. Oh, now we it's caught up in the design. Okay, cool. So again, we had to zoom in. Again, this requires a lot of zooming in. Hold on. It actually took, again, let's do this again. Because it was actually taking the text, which, you know, we don't want that to happen. And now, you know, it would be the same thing, right? So we would be adding this necklace on. And sometimes you just have to play around a lot with it to adjust it. See how it's sticking out at the end? We don't want to do that. We want to make it fit the neck perfectly. So you have to play around a lot with the necklaces to get them on so they actually look right. But this is just giving you some ideas on all the things that you can do. They have a lot of different, a lot of different necklaces. So I always like to keep it in the family of, of the same kind of style. And you could check out the style by the three dots that'll let you know. See, this is cartoon style. I really like to keep it in the same style, like watercolor. But we'll see how this looks. So, again, this is more of a choker style. So, this should be placed very tightly around the neck, as you can see. And we'll just bring it out just a little bit because, again, that is how it would look. And then you could add, this is how you add different, you know, accessories on. And now you would just move it down, you know, to down on her neck. But this is the actual choker, right? So now you actually have the choker on the neck and you could zoom in. So this is how you actually begin to start changing your design, adding in elements. If you want to add in earrings, you definitely can. But then you would go ahead and make sure that you have everything grouped inside of here. So what I love to do is hit shift and let me just unlock the position. Again, you just click on the unlock button and you can just actually just highlight over all of it. And now it's just one happy image together. So now you have the image here to zoom in. And again, I will upscale it, but look, you have a nice necklace design with the outfit. And now you have a brand new look and it's very, very nice. So you go from actually having this look and there's just so many different looks that you could create, right? So I'm going to take the logo off of here, but this is how you get to have different designs and different looks. So here she just has on a plain white shirt and here she has on a necklace with a pass me the pie and you can add in earrings you could put on a bracelet so many different things you could do so let me know 
how you are able to dress up your design in the comments below and don't forget to comment share like and subscribe sign up for that free masterclass that we're doing where we're showing you how to do this and so much more to create your own income online